Okay, welcome back. We are now at, at section 8.7. And in 8.7, we're going to talk a little bit about our radical functions. Now, just so we kind of know something here, the graph of the square root of x, yeah, technically is a little part down here that's the minus version, but typically we just look at the positive version. And we're going to talk about the domain is that all x values are greater than or equal to x because we really can't take the square root of a negative number. Now, the range itself is going to be also y is greater than or equal to 0 because we're just using that branch of it right there. Now, when we talk about the cube root of x, look at the cube root of x. There's no restriction whatsoever because we can take the cube root of positive and negative numbers. So the domain is that x is all reals. And then, of course, the range also is that y. The y values are all reals. Anything goes. Anything goes. Everything's good. So whenever you see a cube root, domain and range are always going to be all reals. Now, it depends on what happens to the square root of x graph. Uh, that's going to determine... Uh, again, what the domain range. If we move it up, obviously we're going to change the range. If we move it left or right, we're going to move. We're going to change the range, uh, domain just a little bit as we do that. So be aware of that. So let's look at a couple of those here. Uh, the first one is this one. Let's look at the square root of x minus three. Now, if you were to graph this, what you would notice is is that this graph of this is going to move it right three. So one, two, three. If you were to graph that, and don't be afraid to use decimals or your calculator. Get the graph. The graph's going to look something like that. So in this case, you know, since we moved it over to the right, we now say that the domain is that x is greater than or equal to 3. Okay, see how it starts at 3 and goes to the right? Uh, and again, the range didn't get changed, so we'd say that y is still greater than or equal to 0. So it helps to draw a picture of it. If you kind of know what the transformation is, you can do that. Don't be afraid to graph, ever. That's just, with Desmos, it makes it so much easier to kind of visualize what's going on. All right, so once again, let's go to the next one here. We now have, okay, so now this is a cube root graph. We're going to vertically stretch it by 2 and move it right to. Uh, it doesn't matter what we do to it. Again, if it's a cube root of x, a cube root of uh, x graph, domain and range are going to always be all reals. That's your answer every single time when we do those. So those are nice. Those are, that's, that's pretty easy money right there. All right, the next parts that we're going to work on, again, these transformations, we always seem to want to kind of reiterate these. Uh, now in response to radicals, yeah, just remember these rules. Again, you can see this in the slides. I'll send you the PowerPoint slides for 8.7. Uh, you can always refer to these as an example. Um, again, as we look through those, it's also in the book. You have that online textbook you can always look at too and find those pages as well in 8.7. So what we want you to be able to do now is if we give you an uh, equation, we want you to be able to tell us what's it going to do. Now remember, plus 5, and when in doubt, graph it. Right? Now that just moves it up 5. Right, up 5. All right, and then here, well, if we go plus 1, that's going to move it up 1. Mm -hmm. We know that. We can see that. All right, now what's this one going to do? Now, if we multiply out in front by 1 half, remember that's a vertical compression. Vertical compression is what that does. Squeezes it down is what happens. All right, let's try a couple more. Now, it doesn't matter if it's a square root or cube root. That's just the parent function. Remember, if it's a negative out front, that's a reflection across the x-axis. And then that's going to also move it right for So we want to be able to identify these transformations. And like I said, when in doubt, graph it if you're not really sure. All right, now with the negatives underneath the radical, that reflects it across the y-axis. And then plus 3 moves it up 3. All right. And then this one's kind of a big kahuna here. Lots of them. Now the negative out here does a reflection across the x. This is a vertical stretch of 3. And that moves it down 1. So we want to be able to identify and describe all of the transformations that are being done. Okay. Now the other thing we're going to do is kind of switch things around. We're going to give you the parent function, square root of x, and we want you to perform these transformations. So we're going to start square root of x. We want to reflect it across the x-axis. Well, that puts a negative out front. Compress it vertically by a factor of 1 fifth. So just put a 1 fifth one, and then down 5. Minus 5. So if we give you the transformations, you should be able to convert the rule. If we give you the rule, you should be able to identify those transformations. That's 8.7. Do the worksheet there. Check it. And once again, always contact me if you have any questions. Until next time, I'm Mr. Boone.